All right, second Prince EA reaction. What is school for? I've been really talking about this topic a lot on my channel lately. Here's my reaction. In the biggest picture, this is just a, a message, a time capsule to my past self, my high school self, even my college self. So also to my core audience of hustlers, but any uh, high school hustlers out there, any college hustlers out there, any middle school hustlers out there doing business that want to like, People that follow Gary V, that want to be entrepreneurs, that want to be YouTubers, that want to do their own thing in life. I've been pondering this question a lot. What is school for? Because I'll tell you about my story later, but long story short, I'm living my dream job and I'm very excited about it. And being a natural creative and recording and blogger type person, it's kind of my job now to answer people's questions. And I get asked this question a lot on my YouTube channel that I've been building for three years while traveling and working remotely doing online business, about school, about how to create your dream job, about this whole subject. So excited, let's play it. Boom. What is school for? Feel free to call me slow, but I spent 16 years going to school and I still don't know. When I finished, I didn't know how to do my own taxes, purchase a home or apply for a loan. I didn't know a thing about investments, building credit or getting a job. I graduated at the top of my class, and what did I have? This fancy diploma to sit at home with my mom. Hey, you got anything to eat? I got degrees. Hey, you ain't got no tissue. I got degrees. How are you living? I'm not. Oh, it's so funny. So anyways, at this point, um, this message is mostly for people that are in high school, and they're kind of, you know, they're seeing the media, even the mainstream media, like Wall Street Journal and all the big publications talking about the student debt uh, loan crisis and is college worth it? And all these big news stories about college and how the game is changing and there's a bubble popping. Everyone has degrees, so it's not even really making you more competitive in the job market. So if you're in high school or even if you're uh, whatever age and you're kind of thinking, okay, Maybe I shouldn't jump straight into college or straight into uni, or maybe it's not even for me, or maybe I wanna take some time off and go, even though all my friends are going. Like, this is for you. And I wanna have me, my channel, as just one example of, there's other options of jumping straight into uni, and I'll get into those later in detail. I have a degree, by the way. They did teach me some important skills, like factoring trinomials and how mitochondria is the powerhouse of- Mitochondria, I majored in biochemistry. Pythagorean theorem, cause it helped me a lot. <laughs> yeah. Me truthfully, I forgot. Mom, remember when you would ask me, what did you learn in school today? And I would say, nothing much. I wasn't being modest. The truth about it, mom, is I had already forgotten. And it's not just me, millions of students sing the same song. How many of you guys avoid eye contact with the teacher to try not to get caught upon? Afraid to raise your hand for fear of being wrong, which proves that school isn't an environment for learning or building up the intellect. It's just a game you play for grades and how many A's you can collect. But I guess what do you expect when the most commonly asked question in class is, is this gonna be on the test? <laughs> is this gonna be on the test? <laughs> so you guys all know, we all know. Oh man, college was so funny, man. I don't know how I did it, but Everyone knows it's about memorization. It's about slamming, it's about before the test, how much you can memorize that's gonna be on the test. It's so funny and of course that's what this whole video is about is trying to improve the school system. So preaching to the choir if you're already watching this, let's keep if going. If school put learning instead of testing and memorizing as the top standard, then the letter F would not stand for failure. It would stand for find another answer another way and if school yeah. was really interested in our personal and academic success students would wake up later have more freedom and homework a lot less and that's not my opinion all right he just talked about wake up later so i don't know if you guys can relate most of you can relate but i have never been a morning person since i was a little kid i always remember even during sleepovers, I was always the last one to bed. I'm just born a night owl. And there are even studies that prove that there are night people and morning people. I find myself most alive at night. I like to stay up late. I hate it every single morning when my parents are knocking on my door, my mom's knocking on my door. 
I'm like, five more minutes, Ma! Oh, that was one of some of my worst memories that come to mind. And I know you guys can relate. And one of my favorite things about my job now, I can wake up whenever I want because I can stay up to work as long as I want. And so I run my own day on my old schedule. Yes, I can travel. Yes, you know, I control my own income and all those things. But one of my favorite parts is control over my sleep. Not having to wake up to an alarm clock. Not having to wake up at 8 a.m. to be somewhere by 9. I know some of you guys can relate. I'm just never good in the morning. And so when I graduated college, I didn't want to jump into a 9 to 5 because I was like, man, I, that would be horrible. Waking up Monday through Friday, getting up at like 7, 8 a.m. to be at work by 9. I was like, I can't do that. Even in college, I never took a 9 a.m. class. Okay, maybe one my four years. I always picked the later class classes. And so if that's you, don't be afraid. Use me as your, your an excuse and your example that I have a career where I don't have to do 9 to 5. Okay, there's many people on the internet, you know, bragging about no 9 to 5 lifestyle, but no, some of us really really don't want the nine to five life and we already know that so if you're a young hustler and you already know you don't want nine to five follow me and other dudes on youtube that are doing it and find someone that you can relate to and see what are they doing can i do something in a career similar to that and go for that now that's not going to happen overnight all right you may have to start at a nine to five many of us are going to have to start at a nine to five do that for a number of years, a number of months or a number of years to save up money, work on your side hustle, nights and weekends, so you can break away from the nine to five. My whole channel is, is about breaking away from the nine to five. And uh, I gotta pinch myself every day that, blessed that I don't have to wake up early, just like Prince Yeh said. All right, by the way, we are in beautiful Bangkok, Thailand right now. You can kind of see in the background. I've been living in Thailand and tropical places running my internet business, working remotely for four years. Three years and 11 months. From an extra hour of sleep, then putting them through the torture of an extra essay, reading 150 pages, doing problems one through 60 on a worksheet, and having three projects due by the end of the week. Not only is it pointless pain, but it's also dim with Pointless pain? It's so much work, but they don't teach the time management skills to deal with it. They don't teach the time management skills. I was just talking about time management skills this morning with me and my two business partners. We have this a shared work calendar. I call it the grind grid. It's a time management calendar. This is something I built myself in a spreadsheet. And it's helped me over the last 10 months I've been using it. So if you're interested in some sort of time management uh, work calendar, let me know in the comments. I'm actually thinking about putting together a group shared work calendar so we can all keep each other accountable on working on our side hustles, how many hours per day, how many hours per week, what we're getting done, check, 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 this is what I got done this week, and we can all see what each other are doing. So if we're not doing as much, we can feel dumb. Oh, these motherfuckers are out hustling me. Make it a game, productivity game. It's all about social accountability. That really helps, I've learned that. Anyway, quick tip, let's keep going. We are controlled by a bell. By the way, hit that bell button if you want to see my three uploads per week and my live streams. A million questions like, YouTube, why right? didn't you go before class? I'm sorry, my bladder is kind of on its own schedule and it's not always timely. See, teachers always say, use your time wisely. But that never made sense to me. Because these six cruel hours of our lives we call school might literally be the worst use of time management ever Damn. in history. He's going Think hard, about it. dude. The traditional teaching method is foolish. No, it's useless. Multiplied by the square root of stupid. <laughs> what they do is they cram information in your head, force feeding you, and then you throw it up on the test. That's not education. That's bulimia. And the more bulimic you are, the better bulimia, you do on their assessment. So it's no wonder why so back many students graduate that. mentally and emotionally anorexic. See, school teaches you how to memorize dots. True education should teach you how to connect them. True education teaches you how to catch a fish. School teaches you, yeah, you caught the fish, but you didn't show your work, so it doesn't count. Throw it back. 
I'm just asking, what is school for? It's not education, that's just not true. If you still think that, you might be sniffing glue. See, the word education comes from the Latin root educe, meaning bring out, i.e. bring the gifts out of a person and make them viable. But school doesn't bring out much. It just stuffs more facts inside of you. Now, now some of that stuff Fact is justifiable. We need reading, writing, and some arithmetic. That's fair. Boys. But are you telling me metamorphic go. and igneous rocks are more important than self-care? If suicide is the third leading cause of death of ages 10 to 24, wow. and Harvard studies suggest the biggest predictor for success is self-control and emotional health, then why the heck aren't we taught how to handle stress, bullies, or rejection? How about anxiety or depression? You know, skills we need for our entire lives. Bro, I don't even know how to cook. I'm honestly surprised I'm still alive. <laughs> But hey, at least I can name all the battles that happened in the Civil War. Seriously, what is school for? This is another funny one because I'm passionate about history. I'm, a, I'm one of the history buffs, if you're a history buff too. like There's so many awesome videos that explain the Civil War in 15 minutes. I just watched one just this week called The American Revolution Oversimplified in 15 minutes. You can learn history on YouTube. Oh man. Oh man, that and then the fact that we don't learn some of the biggest historical stories that happen in Anyways, if you're into history, I have a playlist called True History. It's some of the best uh, history learning videos uh, around YouTube because I've been consuming YouTube full time for about, for about six to eight years now. And you're already watching YouTube, so props. Ever since I turned off the TV and unsubscribed for cable, from cable and started to consume only YouTube, it changed my life. Share this with someone who's watching too much TV. Yes. Needed to be successful and that's something we do not doubt. But do you own a MacBook or iPhone? Did you know they both were created by a dropout? Are you watching this video on Facebook or YouTube? Doesn't matter which you choose, they both were created by dropouts. Ever use Snapchat, WhatsApp, shop at Whole Foods? Well, thank a dropout. Does your home furniture come from Ikea? Okay, don't get the wrong idea. He was not a dropout, don't be a fool. I mean, how could he drop out? Ingvar Kamper, founder of Ikea, never even went to school. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. He's just picking and choosing. There's millions who didn't go to school that aren't successful. Who is he fooling? And you're right. <laughs> but open your history books and start perusing. You'll find the very people we idolize in school never really had formal and or secondary schooling. I'm talking George Washington, Abe Lincoln, America's best presidents had zero school between them. Ben Franklin, Thomas Edison, shall I proceed? Ernest Hemingway, Mark Twain, Teddy Roosevelt, Margaret Mead. Now please, I'm not saying drop out. ACT is BS if they say those determine your- These kids in the video are like, yeah, but I still have to cram for this fucking exam tomorrow. So don't expect school to open doors because it's more likely to slam them Ooh. in your face. Don't expect school to open doors because it's more likely to slam them in your face. They say school actually inhibits entrepreneurs. One of the biggest factors being college loan debt. We'll get to that in a minute. Sometimes I wonder about all the dreams lost in school and how much potential goes to waste. If it wasn't for music and YouTube, then I... I hate waste! Been just another lost That's case. my number one thing I hate. Everybody watch waste. This, please. Close your eyes. Imagine a child sitting in the back of some teacher's class in some town. He never raises his hand, he fails most of his classes, but inside of him, there is a passion. And if nurtured and brought out, will lead him to discover the cure for cancer. But you see, One I'm afraid that cancer that child's gift will never come out. He will never win the Nobel Prize award because in class he was ignored and his worth was judged only by his scores. So teachers, principals, parents, advisors, and students, I ask one more time, what is school for? Hey! He's a beast. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Peace! Oh! He's a beast! He's a beast, yo. First of all, props Prince EA. He's doing the type of work that I'm also very passionate about, and that is the education revolution. Let's 
allow me to rant and enlighten my past self and all you young hustlers watching whoever's what still watching if you're still watching like this video leave a comment let me know what you're doing what you what you're thinking at this point okay everyone knows that the education system is old it was created like 200 years ago or some shit and it's in need of a big big update and everyone kind of has the sense that there's this education revolution that's going on right now and my life is a case in point example because I bought an online course and took an online course to learn about drop shipping and e-commerce and online marketing and now that's my career that's my career and this was my dream job after okay I'll tell you my story real quick after college I didn't want to jump into a like a serious job I majored in genetics and cell biology so my major was basically setting me up to get a job inside of a lab pouring solutions into micro pipettes doing this thing and then I realized oh I don't want to do that because as I said I definitely don't want to work a nine-to-five I it just wouldn't work for me and so I did my my summer college job for two years full-time after college and my summer job was knocking doors selling for Comcast so I was just like yeah I'm just gonna do this for a couple years and save up money and then see if I can pivot to something else so during that time, I visited Parker in Thailand, my best friend who I grew up with, with a couple of our buddies, because he was doing a semester abroad here in Thailand, in Bangkok and a couple other cities. We came out to visit him for two weeks just as a vacation. You know, I had never traveled outside the States at all. And if you graduate high school and you don't want to jump into uni, working abroad is a great thing. Even if you want to take a year off uni, work abroad is a great thing. Or after college, working abroad is a great thing. As they say, as Gary Vee says, we're all so freaking young. Now is the time to take risks. Now is the time to start that band that you wanted to. Now is the time to start that startup idea. Now is the time to travel to Southeast Asia or South America or to Europe or to Africa and go volunteer, to go teach English abroad, to go explore. And as Gary Vee says, all the shit that you think that you might want to do, go try all that shit. You can take four to eight years trying a bunch of shit. That's what this is for. That's what our 20s is for. All right, there's that. And I got, I got very lucky, I understand not everyone that pursues a side hustle is gonna make it full time. Most are gonna flop. And I had flops before I made something stick and hit and work. But back to the story, it came to, uh, did a two week vacation in Thailand and Parker was like, yeah dude, two months was, was too short. Let's, let's work abroad for a year. I, I bet we can get hooked up at one of these uh, big resorts that our program is affiliated with. So I was like, yeah, let's work abroad. And so we moved, moved back to Seattle and got the cheapest apartment we possibly could. A $950 one bedroom studio apartment. Had that sliding wooden divider that uh, closed off the bed section. Parker slept in the bed. I slept on the couch for a year with blankets. And I would go knock doors in the afternoons and evenings, get my sales commissions. And Parker would work at uh, front desk at the Marriott. Marriott. You know, nine to five type stuff. I, I didn't work at nine to five. It was more like five to nine in the afternoon. Flash forward four years, five years. I make online sales. I have an online Amazon store. People are buying my shit right now. And I'm doing YouTube. Which has allowed me to film more, create more, do passion things. Everyone knows the education system is in need for an update. There will be the early adopters. I'm an early adopter of the education revolution. Taking education into my own hands and going, doing some alternative options. So I'm an example of an early adopter and a lot of you are early adopters, taking education into your own hands. 
learning what you like to learn on sites like Brilliant and Skillshare and Khan Academy. There's all these online platforms that are optimized for actual learning because it's driven by you, whatever you like learning. Go at your own pace, et cetera, et cetera. Links below to those sites. And so the, the, the public schooling system, it's gonna take another generation at least for, for most public schools to start to implement some of these innovative, more innovative and smart learning systems and techniques, but that's gonna take a long time. But the ambitious among us will go ahead and become early adopters in the education revolution. Take education into our own hands. So this video, it seems like it was filmed like in a high school. And the thing about high school is most of us don't really have a choice about that. Okay, a lot of people do drop out of high school, but most people don't. And we're not 18 yet, and our parents, it's kind of up to our parents. You know, we're not legal adults yet. But when it comes to uni, that's a huge issue. And I get asked about that a lot in the YouTube comments. And people reach out to me like, Riley, I want to have a career like you. I want to have the freedom to be able to travel a lot. I value travel. <laughs> and I want to be able to work on my own schedule. I want financial independence, meaning that you have passive income coming in more than your monthly expenses. That's financial independence. Where you're making money on your businesses and your investments every month, automatically. Whether or not you work that month. Over the past four years, I've visited over 30 countries and I've taken we did a backpacking trip, road trip across Kenya, and we opened our laptop maybe for like one hour a day just to check in on stuff. That's the beauty of having an internet-based career. That's what my whole channel is about. How to have an internet-based career. As you can tell, I'm so passionate about this. And I wasn't thinking like this in high school, which is why I wanted, I wanted to do a reaction to this video because maybe a lot of high school, maybe younger cats are watching this, but I want to speak out to my high school self and start to get those entrepreneurial beliefs going and start to ask the questions that they don't ask you when it comes to career options. I have a whole separate video about questions you need to ask yourself questions to ask yourself when when trying to think of what type of career you want to go into because I know most young young people that I ask even just like around like Bangkok and touristy places when I see young cats in the clubs or whatever I'm like oh yeah what are you doing man what do you want to do oh you just graduated high school oh you're on a gap year that's what everyone in Australia and, and the UK does by the way they take gap years after high school and so use that as your excuse guys say mom Dad, you know, in the UK and Australia, they take gap years. So that's what I'm gonna do after high school. I don't wanna rush into it because I'm not sure what I want to uh, <coughs> spend your money on in college or take, my, uh, take a huge amount of student debt in college. I'm not sure what I wanna do yet, so I'm gonna go work, get some experience, try some different jobs, try some different fields, see what I wanna do, see what I like doing, see what I don't like doing, maybe travel, go work abroad for a bit, take some short trips abroad, take some long trips abroad. I'm gonna do that after high school. And you guys should totally look into it. <laughs> but when I was in high school, I had no idea, no idea that other countries did gap years. And if you're not from America, like it's like most high schools, it's like what college are you going to? How many college applications do you have? That's the attitude. Not that that's wrong or anything, because the university plan was once really smart. And we have to understand, let's admit it, we are told, go to university by our parents and our grandparents and our teachers and the counselors because they grew up in the age where most people didn't have degrees and if you had that degree, then you had the upper hands 
in the workplace as far as getting a job. Plenty of YouTube videos on the stats on this. By the way, I have another video called Is College Worth It in 2018 where I explain the stats. Now, pretty much everyone goes to college. Everyone has that degree. And so, employers don't even really care. And this was a key point that I saw in another YouTube video. An employer has two applicants come in applying for the same job. One has a four-year degree. One has four years of experience in the field. Which one does the employer want to hire? You could argue both ways. And so employers are getting these all these stacks of applications. Everyone has a degree. And so it's like, just because you have a degree doesn't mean you're going to be more qualified. Anyways, college is for some people, especially if you want to be a doctor, dentist, or lawyer, like I say in my other video, because those industries are strictly regulated. So to my past self, questions that I wish I asked myself. First of all, do you want to work a nine to five? I would say definitely no. Okay, that gets a lot of, a lot of career options off the table. And then I ask myself, how much do I value travel? And how much, how important is international travel being a part of my life? How important is that? Huge question that we are never asked. Because it's one of those re unrealistic questions. But as Tim Ferriss says, you got to get unrealistic. And no, not everyone can have their dream job. Not everyone can, can create their own business. But people watching this video, people still watching this video, the hustlers, the ambitious ones among us is only a small percentage, us community here on YouTube. Most people are only watching TV, not self-educating themselves. They're just going to go along with the program. All right. That's okay. Us, a small group of like-minded hustlers, the Gary V types, you know what I'm saying? The Prince EA types, the taking advantage of the education revolution, all of this good information on the internet, all of these alternative career options that we're seeing these YouTubers bring to light, showing us, hey, I'm just a regular dude. If you put in the work and you get a little bit lucky, you can figure out your ideal situation. And there's no perfect situation. Being a digital nomad, as they call people like me who live in different cities and countries throughout the year, just bring the laptop. By the way, if it's your first time ever hearing the term digital nomad, then let me know in the comments because that would be crazy. You know, someone actually told me that, yo, Riley, you should seriously go, uh, uh, go speak at some high schools. You should go speak at your old high school. And I was like, yeah, but they probably won't want me to do that. <laughs> because let's be honest. High schools are breeding grounds for the university system. And the university system is a breeding ground for the corporatocracy system, for the corporate system, for the furnace of the economy. And I'm not saying that's bad. We need good employees to work for all these big companies, for the banking system, for the pharmaceutical system, for a bunch of great companies. But it's not for everyone. Most people are not watching this video. But if you're kind of thinking that, yeah, I want to do my own thing. I want to be a YouTuber or a creative or a digital designer. I want to have a, I want to have a website that just makes me ten thousand dollars a month, and I just like chill in Thailand. Sip. Do I know people doing that right now? I do. I know a guy. He's another YouTuber, actually. But he has a whole online business in, in addition to his YouTube. He's like, he's like, yeah, I'm in the, in the beach right now. He's in, he's in the uh, southern beaches of Thailand. Just sipping, chilling. So I'm speaking to my past self here, my past self. So if you want travel to be a part of your life, and I think most people do. Rolf Potts says in the, uh, the book Vagabonding, which is a book you guys should read if you really are into travel, in addition to the four hour work week. He says, uh, most people have dreams of world travel, but it's not something that we should just sit back and wait for the opportunity to come to us. It's definitely something that you have to actively go out and pursue and do. So I'm very lucky that I have been able to visit like 30 countries while living 11 months of the year. 
in tropical places. We ended up coming to Southeast Asia first because it was uh, there was a digital marketing conference out here in Chiang Mai, Thailand. It happens every year in January. So leave a comment and I hope to really see some young hustlers, maybe some recent high school grads, recent college grads. Maybe you're on your winter break in January. It's January 19th in Chiang Mai, Thailand. So come out for a week or two, possibly three if you can make it. It's just a conference of young, young and old entrepreneurs, all about digital marketing, different ways that you can become a digital nomad. That's why it's called the Nomad Summit. People who are entrepreneurs, online entrepreneurs, but also share a passion for travel. And if there's one book to understand the digital nomad mindset is The 4-Hour Workweek. It's a figure of speech title. Think of it as, uh, think of it as the 4-Hour Workday or the 4-Day Workweek. How to use technology in the 21st century social media age and outsourcing. Build that around your career to allow you to have more free time basically to focus on some passion projects like starting a YouTube channel or starting a blog or going to volunteer in Africa or volunteer around the world. I have some people say, you know, really, that's what I want to do. I want to give back to the world. I want to volunteer. That's great. Let's get you some passive income online. Let's get you have a work remote career. And then you can be based in Kenya, whatever, and you can just go to uh, the Java, Java coffee shop where we worked in Kenya for a little bit, for a few hours there. I vlogged, I'm a vlogger daily vlogger whenever I'm traveling I'm daily vlogging you can see my whole entire Kenya road trip so if travel is if you really want travel world travel to be a part of your life and you're serious about that you have to think deeply when I was like in third grade I remember I wanted to be either Indiana Jones or an astronaut and I look back on that and I'm like wow yeah I really had that explorer gene in me from a young age and so I'm very lucky and blessed that I'm able to express that lots of adventures in my life traveling to different cities and different countries and even living in a place like bangkok the new york city of thailand aka the big mango every day is an adventure because i work in different cafes co-working spaces and every day as jason silva says my mind is mapping a new environment so it feels more alive Anyways, it's pretty cool to be able to live in uh, any any city. Anyways, if, if you are already working on your online side hustle, let me know in the comments. That would be really dope. I know a lot of, I remember a lot of hustlers back in high school. They were like doing side hustles, whether it was making fake IDs or flipping shoes or something like that. There's a lot of hustlers when I look back. And I hope all of them are entrepreneurs now, but graduated 2008 high school. We didn't really have the Shopify's and the Amazon FBA's and the online store and that kind of type of thing to create like a scalable online business. Actually, I remember Blake did have, he had a t-shirt business. He had a t-shirt business. He had a t-shirt brand. Blake was a hustler since the beginning. That's, that's our, our other best friend homie we grew up with who's based down in Kenya doing entrepreneurial projects. And uh, he brought us down there to Kenya. We did the road trip with him. Anyways, shout out to everyone, anyone from Kenya watching this. Love you guys, I'll be back soon. Anyways, you're, you're getting the point here. If you wanna travel, you really uh, just know it's possible and you have to take your career, you have to take that into, into account. If you wanna live abroad for most of the year, then you're gonna have to have an internet-based, laptop-based career. So how do I have an internet-based, laptop-based career? There's basically, I break it down on my blog as well. Livingthatlife.com slash start is like a page where I'm breaking down everything, all the walls. If you're like just getting started, like, okay, I wanna be an entrepreneur, Riley, but I don't know what to do. I wanna do my own thing. I definitely want travel to be a part of my life. What are my options? Break it down for me. So I'm gonna break it down for you. Um, basically, there's three ways, all right? Either you are a freelancer, so you do like piecework jobs on sites like Upwork or freelancer.com, or you do your own marketing out there. You, you email companies brands, small businesses, and you do like social media marketing for them. You do their graphic design, you do their email copywriting, you do their product pages, you do their video editing, you do their voiceovers. So work for clients remotely. And I have a freelancing playlist on the tricks to getting freelance work and making consistent income freelancing. I know a lot of freelancers that I've met over the last four years, that's their full-time thing. They work, you know, just like everyone else, four to eight hours per day, whatever. 
however much they want and they do work for clients and they, that allows them to travel and live abroad. For example, Chris the Freelancer. Shout out Chris the Freelancer. Met him in Chiang Mai, I have multiple videos with him. He has a big YouTube channel. That's one way of freelancing. Second way is um, just work for your company, work for a company remotely. I've met many, many digital nomads that just work for a company remotely. Could be a big company, could be small, but I think everyone kinda is getting the feeling now that lots of companies are letting their employees work from home. I've met, I've met people that uh, they're, they're here in Thailand and their employer doesn't know they're in Thailand. And I've also met people that their employer does know. I have a link to some guides about how to negotiate remote work agreements with your employer. And the best way and the third way everyone should be striving towards this is being an internet entrepreneur. Being an entrepreneur, so having owning your own online business, owning your own online business, something that is scalable, something that runs automatically, and there are many different ways that my friends do this. From having your own Amazon store, creating creating your own physical products, and building an Amazon store. That's what I do specifically, so that's what people tend to ask me mostly about. That's not the only way. Uh, you can have your own Shopify store, and do your own marketing to get traffic to your Shopify store, whereas Amazon, our sales come from searches within Amazon. So that's physical products. You can also create digital products like online courses and eBooks, Kindle books, many different methods and strategies to do that. So physical products, digital products. You can also create your own agencies. So it's kind of like freelancing, but you outsource the work, whether that be to people in the States or outsource to other countries like India, Philippines, Eastern Europe, where you can get good talent for cheaper than someone in America or Western country, called outsourcing. Anyway, that's creating a digital marketing agency. And I know multiple friends who make $8,000 a month or more by creating their own little digital marketing agencies. And they'll do jobs like web development or copywriting. And so that's something that's scalable, you know what I'm saying? Something that like, I can go take, do a meditation retreat in Chiang Mai for a month or a number of weeks and come back and my business is, hasn't gone down. That's what's called owning a business. Creating systems that make you money. And I know guys that do crypto stuff in the crypto. Anyways, uh, on my blog you will see links to my page where I break down all the most common online online business models, many different ways to skin a cat. <clears throat> so you can see this is my passion because I'm living it every day that I wake up. Today I was excited to wake up and do the reaction to this video on the rooftop of my apartment here in New York City of Thailand. And later this, in a couple months I could be in Bali. I was in Bali a few months ago. I was in Vietnam a few months ago. And I've, did a, I've lived a month in China. I was in Europe last month, in Amsterdam, in Istanbul, in Croatia. And uh, anyways, I think you guys get the point. I hope this reached some hustlers and um, flip some switches and, and share this. Share this with someone who's watching too much TV. And I don't, TV is not bad, okay? I still watch occasional shows on, on uh, Netflix, but YouTube is my main thing, man. And just by watching this video, you are a part of the education revolution. What is school for? It's a good question. A lot of people say that school is for getting the best job possible. But what I want to ask my past self is what type of job do you really want? <laughs> do you really want a job or do you want to be an entrepreneur? More specifically, a lifestyle entrepreneur. What I'm involved in and what Tim Ferriss coined is called lifestyle entrepreneurship. Creating businesses that you can automate, that are lean, like the book Lean Startup, that's a good one, that allow you to live the type of life that you want to. Whether it's living in a tropical place during the winter, like I have for the past four years. I've had an endless summer for four years, guys. I know a lot of people that they say that's their number one reason that they want to be become an entrepreneur. Or whether it's whether you just want to be able to work from home and like take care of your grandma or your parents or be with your kids or be with your spouse. Whatever it is, I wanna get my past high school self thinking about this and starting to think harder about different career options and starting to think what are my values? Do I value travel? Do I value freedom of schedule? 
Do I value not having to wake up in the morning and getting my work done at my own time? Do I value being able to work from home? Do I value being able to work from different cities anywhere around the world so I can satisfy my itch for travel and experiences? What do I, what do I value? And so it can start with, you've already started by getting on YouTube, but getting on YouTube and discovering what people are doing. And a key question, another key question here guys, that I would ask my past self, is instead of thinking so much about what you wanna do, think hard about who you want to live like. This is another Tim Ferriss one from the four hour work week. Find someone who you want to live like and then find out what they're doing that allows them to live that life. You know what I'm saying? So we kind of have this career life flipped backwards. It's like we choose a career and then we try to live the, the best life possible on the side of that. What Tim Ferriss says, and a lot of entrepreneurs, lifestyle entrepreneurs, the Tim Ferriss types, think about how you want to live and what you want your life to be like and then look into different career options that those type of people are doing. And that's why YouTube, the education revolution is hand in hand with the YouTube revolution. You guys already know. It's because through YouTube, we've been able to see all these lifestyle entrepreneurs like me and people doing alternative things like creating their own t-shirt brand or whatever, creating their own YouTube channel, blog, creating their own digital marketing agencies. <laughs> creating their own physical products, digital products, doing their own Kickstarter campaigns, blah, 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 blah. And people living all these cool lives, you know what I'm saying? Living all these awesome lives. So if you wanna be one of those people, figure out what are they doing? As Gary Vee would say, reach out to them, offer, to, offer them to work for them for free, something. Offer to make Instagram videos for them for free. Anyways, if you don't know who Gary Vee is. One fucking life. One life, my friends. Yeah, follow him. I mean, some of you probably don't. Let me know if, if you don't. The biggest poison is regret. I'll leave you with this because a lot of you need it. How you make your money is more important than how much you make. You should follow him. So when I was in high school, I didn't have the entrepreneurial mindset, but then it clicked, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I don't want to be an employee, I want to be an entrepreneur. It started to click. And I was like, oh yeah, fuck. <laughs> By the way, if you want to be rich, like in high school, a lot of people were like, I don't know, but I want to be rich. And like, that was one of me. You know, at first I wanted to be, of course, pro football player, pro baseball player. There comes a point where that's impossible. So it's like, but I still want to live like that, so I want to be rich, I want to be a millionaire. Okay, good, that's good. That means you're ambitious, for sure. Not everyone wants to be rich. I've asked people and they're like, no, I don't wanna be rich. I just wanna have a nice house, good life. But if you're one of those hustlers and like, yep, I wanna be rich, I wanna be a millionaire. That was me too. I was born ambitious. You know, some of us are born naturally more ambitious. That's just the way it is. I'll end on this and the way, of course I don't have a million dollars in my bank account and I haven't made a million dollars profit. Our Amazon store has made, made over a million dollars in sales in three years. So whatever, millionaire, whatever. But what Tim Ferriss would call me, they call me Tim Ferriss Jr. Cause if you were thinking that I kind of look like Tim Ferriss, let me know in the comments. Cause that's what people say. They call people like me new rich millionaires. That's why I did a podcast last week on my birthday, my 29th birthday called how I became a new rich millionaire. And what that means, new rich, it means I'm not necessarily rich in bank account, but what I am rich in is time freedom, location freedom, and financial freedom, which is I have an automated income coming in every month that's more than my monthly expenses. As Tim Ferriss says, you don't necessarily have to have a million dollars in the bank account to live the types of life experiences that we think only millionaires can afford like travel, like getting up and putting on your gym clothes first thing in the morning because you can work out at the gym anytime that you want. Being able to get my work done on my own time. Those are the little things. Being able to eat out at any restaurant and not worrying about the money. And living in a, a more cost-effective country like Thailand has allowed us to do that since day one. That's called the whole uh, Chiang Mai startup plan. 
That's why the Nomad Summit is there because it's a very popular place for uh, startup businesses, solo startups or startup teams, programmers, YouTubers, bloggers, e-commerce hustlers to go and live on a thousand bucks a month and live a good balanced life where you can eat out and not worry about pinching pennies. Anyways, seriously hope to see you guys there in Chiang Mai. Uh, Nomad Summit, January, Chiang Mai, Thailand, 2019. My parents are gonna be there. My mom was actually there last year, but now my mom and my dad are coming. My mom actually has her own Amazon product. She had an idea for a product. And uh, last summer when I was, actually no, two summers ago when I was there, I helped her go on Alibaba and customize it and source it, and now she's working on a second one. And my little brother has an Amazon product. <laughs> He came out to visit us in the Philippines two years ago and he went home and he was like, fuck this, I'm doing what you guys are doing. <laughs> and he developed his own product. And it's selling on Amazon successfully and it's been a bestseller in the category. Crazy, guys. Anyway, I've ranted too long. Check out this view. Woo! Bangkok, Bangkok, baby, love ya.